Hello, everyone. This is Gulmiki Saleh, the host of Speak Up with Gulmiki. Uh, I'm I am the author of Princess Diversity: The Golden Rule. Today, we have Imam Zia, who is the founder of Make Space, and he will be speaking on the topic of the Golden Rule in Islam. Speak Up with Gulmiki is a talk show that focuses on a holistic approach to tackle hate by promoting understanding, good, and empathy. We want to empower our audience to break the cycle of hate by creating a an environment where there is understanding amongst all people through the universal message of the golden rule, which is to treat others as one would treat oneself. So every week we have a special guest who speaks on promoting goodness in an individual and society. So like I said before, today our special guest is Imam Zia, who is the founder of Make Space. He has been working nonstop to promote goodness in his community. Imam Zia received his early educa Islamic education under the instruction of his matern maternal grandfather, Mullah Muhammad Sair of Kabul, Afghanistan. His la he later completed the memorization of the Quran and the study of Islamic science in Pakistan under the guidance of respectable scholars. He also obtained a degree in computer science for, from George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. Imam Zia has served the Muslim community of Washington metropolitan area and is imam, as an imam, khatib, teacher, community organizer, youth counselor for many years. The main focus of his work has been to revive the Islamic teaching of compassion, inclusion, and to make the message of Islam relevant and practical to the youth, young professionals, and others in the community. Imam Zia regularly lectures and delivers Friday sermons in local masjids at college campuses, participates in interfaith and outreach programs. Imam Zia helps establish Make Space, an inclusive, welcoming, and non judgmental space for the youth, young generation, Muslims, converts, and other community members who, whose needs are typically addressed by traditional. So Imam Zia, thank you for joining us today on Speak Up with Golomiki. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. It's a, such a pleasure to have such a great and honorable scholar like you join our talk. So there's so much we want to ask you and we're excited. And of course, thank you all of those who are watching. As you're watching, please do share this talk with others so they can also benefit from this talk. So Imam Zia, what other great, amazing things you have uh, to share with us about yourself? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbi alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala rasul al-kareem, Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I'm truly uh, honored uh, to be here on your show and I'm not worthy. Uh, it was a pretty lengthy bio, uh, but really I consider myself uh, a student of knowledge and a servant of uh, of our community and not a good one. Uh, and so I do what I can, inshallah, for uh, our community here in the D.C. area. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, uh, the past five years uh, through the platform of Make Space. Um, but uh, I would kind of uh, want to shift the, the spotlight away from myself and uh, onto the young generation in our community, uh, the youth and young professionals that I see so much promise and that, that are doing so many uh, great things uh, for the community, for Islam in America uh, and, and for humanity. And so yeah, glad to be here with you. Mm -hmm. I don't think you could sell yourself so short. I have seen you done amazing work. Yes, it takes you know collective work with the community, the young people pitching in and you leading them. Uh, you're you're setting a great example as a leader. So you know that's what counts the most. So um, besides that, uh, what other like what motivate you to take this path on serving God and serving humanity? Um, 
uh, my motivation uh, has been since uh, uh, since very early in, in, in my childhood, as, as, a, fa- as a matter of fact, uh, the, the the essentials of the deen uh, and what Islam teaches us uh, in, in terms of uh, serving in others, uh, and in terms of the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in which he says that the Sayyid al Qawmi Khadimuhum, that the master of the people is their servant. And so that fulfillment uh, through serving others uh, and uh, seeking the pleasure of God and nothing but the pleasure of God in that process is uh, what I feel uh, an important uh, an important uh, motivator, an important factor and uh, in any kind of work that is supposed to be uh, beneficial, that's supposed to be for the sake of Allah and that's supposed to be sustainable because uh, a lot of uh, ups and downs happen, uh, especially in uh, the work that's done at the level of community to serve the community. At times it's tiring, at times uh, you might feel that uh, the work is really thankless and that uh, it's not really recognized or acknowledged, but if your heart and mind are in the right place uh, and and you know why you're doing it uh, and uh, it's for Allah's sake, then it's easier to continue to sustain that energy and that effort because it's not the results that drive you, it's not the people uh, and their acknowledgement and validation uh, that motivates you. It's the vision and it's uh, the one for whose sake you're doing the work that really keeps you motivated. So the external factors, and of course we're human beings, they play a role, uh, but ultimately uh, that's uh, that I would say is the biggest motivator to keep to keep at it and to continue the good work uh, because of the one for whose sake you're doing you're doing the work. Wow, you said that very beautiful. You know, it's a, it's a struggle keeping your intentions pure and do for the pleasure of God. But it's a work you have to do. You can't give up. But you also have to work with your inner yeah. self and try to um, rethink why you're doing it and always clear up your intention, making sure it's clear for you. So now today's topic is about the golden rule in Islam. So those who are tuning in, uh, we have Imam Zia with us, and he's speaking about the golden rule in Islam. If you're really enjoying the show, share with your friends and family and groups so they could also benefit from it. So Imam Zia, now, what is the golden rule? Oh, well, the golden rule as... Uh... Uh, the viewers probably know very well is, is something that uh, all faiths uh, have in common. It is a, an important component of uh, of fellowship uh, and an important component of worship itself as well. Because uh, if you look specifically uh, uh, at the golden rule uh, from the perspective of Islam, what we're taught is that you are not a believer until and unless you like for your brother and sister what you like and uh, what you like for yourself. And so uh, uh, that uh, connection between Iman and the golden rule is very important because at times it could be uh, misunderstood in a way where people might think that your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with God Almighty, is something that's separated and that's uh, on its own and ha- it has no connection with your uh, relations with your fellow human beings. Whereas uh, Islam ties to those two things uh, very, uh, very tightly 
and, and tells us that there is actually no separation and that in order for your Iman to actually mean something, for it to be completed, for it to be uh, worthy of, uh, of being called Iman, you have to like for your brother what you like for yourself. And that encompasses all حقوق العباد, all rights of our fellow human beings. Uh, and uh, it, you know, the hadith that talks about this is very well known. لا يؤمن وحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه And we translated it earlier. Uh, but uh, one area in which a lot of Muslims uh, continue to misunderstand this hadith is that they think that liking for, for, for your brother what you like for yourself because the word brother is mentioned, uh, it's probably about you and your fellow Muslims. Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah, uh, a very respected uh, scholar of the earlier times, he, uh, and an expert in many sciences of Islam, he says in explanation of this uh, hadith of the Prophet that uh, this brotherhood that's mentioned here, or sisterhood by extension, that's mentioned in the hadith, is not something that's uh, restricted to religion. Your brother or your sister in humanity is fully encompassed in this hadith. So the golden rule is something that uh, brings us together with all of humanity. And Islam emphasizes the golden rule. Uh, and connects us with our fellow human beings, no matter what paths they have chosen for themselves, no matter what belief systems they have, no matter how much we disagree with them in terms of uh, what they believe in or what they don't believe in at all, uh, they are still our brothers and our sisters in humanity. And that's what exactly this hadith, the golden rule, refers to. Wow. Amazing. You know, that's something I use for my book, my book, A Princess Diversity and the Golden Rule. Uh, I made Princess Diversity, the character in my book, um, neutral and religious, because I wanted everyone to feel that she's part of their faith. And the Golden Rule is something we all have in common with other faiths. So I, I, I believe that this was some, brings our, us together as humans and work on the similarity of the Golden Rule. So that was my motivation. And what you said was, you know, amazing how Muslims and non-Muslims, we need to work together. And this golden rule is something that we have that will bring us together. So how critical do you believe it is to apply the golden rule during our times right now? Well, more than ever, this is, uh, this is a time uh, in which uh, we need the good people out there that belong to various faiths to come together uh, and to start with very basic principles and the golden rule is the best place to start because uh, the golden rule uh, not only gives us a platform to do good and to like for others what you like for yourself uh, it also uh, tells us that we uh, uh, we bring others uh, uh, and, and bring them together and uh, we treat them as equal to ourselves despite our difference. And that the assumption of the golden rule is the belief and the essential goodness of all human beings. To start mm -hmm. with that, in this era of mistrust, mm -hmm. uh, misinformation, uh, and so much uh, hate out there, uh, this is, um, I mean, in times of, of peace and times of uh, people getting along, uh, of course, it's still important uh, to uh, highlight the importance of golden rule and to treat one another based on the golden rule. But... And in times of uh, crises and times of uh, when, when, when hate rears its ugly head 
and when uh, communities are starting to be uh, to hate one another and there are individuals that promote uh, that kind of hatred is when it's most important for people of goodwill people people of understanding people of insight to come out uh, forcefully and to reject hate to reject uh, violence to uh, reject otherizing others and to focus uh, and, and really emphasize the oneness of the human family that mm. in our diversity uh, you know we we are still one and we this is a sign from the signs of God that we have so much diversity in our languages and our skin colors and from the backgrounds that we all have uh, and in all of that there is a unity and that unity is that we're all from one source and that we are all brothers and sisters uh, in humanity so it's uh, this uh, effort that you are pursuing is just so so critical and so important and it's the need of the hour and I think every faith group should dedicate a big chunk of their work to emphasizing the golden rule, to emphasizing treating others like you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only way for us to fight back and to push back against uh, the some of the prevalent hate out there. And there is a lot of that, but there's also, uh, we need to say positive and optimistic, there's also a lot of good that's being done, which you're doing is an example of that, and with many others in, in our communities, in this country and around the world, are doing our great examples of that. So uh, it's important to remain optimistic, and it's important to, uh, to push back uh, against hate by emphasizing our common roots and by uh, really bringing to the forefront the reality that we as human beings what we have in common is far more and much more than than what we don't have in common and that what unites us uh, overwhelmingly you know, outweighs uh, what divides us wow very good thank you um thank you for your kind words um i think everyone just needs to plant their seed of goodness and mm -hmm. When we all plant, we ha we'll have a forest of beautiful trees that promote good. So you're doing it at your end, and I'm doing it at my end, and there's others who have been doing it. So everyone, you know, like sometimes a lot of people think that I'm only one person, you know, what can I do? As long as you could change yourself, change your family, change your neighborhood, that's what we need. We don't need to change the world. Everyone is out there doing promoting goodness, like you said. There's people out there that are doing it. It's just our voices need to be louder than haters. So our voice needs to be echoing through the, through the world with goodness. So those who are tuning in, we have Iman Zia today. He's talking about the Godin rule in Islam. So Iman Zia, um, you know, today our children are being raised and um, there's a lot of issues going, you know, they hear, hear all this hate. How is it important for us to teach our children, for parents and teachers, to teach the golden rule of them? I'm sorry, I missed the part of the question. How is it important? Why, why is it important for parents and teachers to teach the golden rule to the children? No, well, uh, again, as I said, uh, the, these times are very interesting times, mm -hmm. to say the least, uh, and we have um, you know, all of this, uh, these divisions out there and uh, a lot of different uh, people uh, that don't have the best interests of humanity in mind, they're doing what they're doing to divide people and to, uh, to sow the seeds of, uh, of hatred. And so, uh, as a general rule, it's important to uh, instill in our children uh, the ideals of, uh, of rule. Uh, an important component of a child's character building should, should be golden rule for them to uh, uh, to navigate 
the difficulties and challenges they will face as, as a child growing up, going through school, dealing with, with different people, with uh, children and youth from different backgrounds. Uh, so the golden rule is that uh, fundamental uh, foundational element that will equip them with what is uh, needed for them uh, to survive and to thrive and to be agents of positivity and of, of service and of, uh, of just bringing people together and of, of spreading uh, trust and, and spreading uh, an ideal in which we we always start off with uh, respecting others and thinking uh, good of others. Uh, uh, and when you start with trust and when you start with valuing others and uh, you acknowledge their dignity and their you know, their rights uh, and then you acknowledge their their needs, uh, that's reciprocated. It's easy. Uh, for that to be the beginning of that ripple effect. And, and each one of us can, uh, as, as our children uh, are growing up, when we teach them these values, and, and in particular the golden rule, what we're doing is that we are throwing that first stone that causes the ripple effect and that uh, will, inshallah, continue uh, to spread. And so what we teach our children is what they will take out to the world with them. And when they come into contact with, with people, whether it's in their school, whether it's uh, in their neighborhoods, uh, or wherever uh, it may be, whether online, uh, those values uh, that we teach them, that we instill in them, uh, they make a, a big difference. And they could be, uh, again, if each uh, parent focuses on that, can you imagine how much good uh, and how much positivity that it, that uh, can spread uh, around the world? And that sort of, uh, you know, it, it uh, highlights the importance of each one of us kind of focusing a lot on our area and sphere of, uh, of influence. You know, you see a lot of people being overly concerned about their sphere of concern, meaning you know, they're worried about, issues uh, at the level of a nation, at the level of, of the community, even at the level of the world, worried about all the injustices of the world, about all the wars, you know, all the oppression, etc., uh, which is not misguided at all. That's, that's important for us to have that concern. But for that to continue to consume us and for us to sit down there and do nothing and just uh, allow that to consume us with grief and sadness without us actually thinking, uh, hey, you know, here is what I'm concerned about, but here is where I have actual influence, which is my community, which is my family, which is my children, as parents speaking as, as a parent. This is where I can have the most influence. This is where I can actually implement and execute the change that I want to see in the world. And so if uh, enough people focus uh, in our on our areas of uh, or our spheres of influence we can be agents of positive change we could create that ripple effect that will uh, ultimately inshallah drown out the voices of hate and uh, the voices of division and that, that's just so uh, so important for us to to get up and to do that inshallah mm -hmm. drowning the voices of hate wow amazing so those who are tuning in, we have Imam Zia, who is the founder of MakeSpace. He's talking on the topic of the golden rule in Islam. As we're continuing our questions, uh, those the guests who are watching, your questions will be answered at the end. So uh, I'm almost halfway done through my questions, then we could take your questions. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, so Imam Zia, one thing is... Um, teaching the golden rule, which, you know, a lot of people, we do have knowledge of how to be good. But the other thing is, how do we apply it, especially uh, how do we create that environment for children on how they can apply the golden rule? Well, uh, again, um, the, the, the general principles and uh, the, the importance of the golden rule 
uh, I think we discussed in some detail. Uh, creating the environment, I guess uh, it takes, uh, uh, it pro probably will take uh, a different form depending on the environment, depending on uh, the community, depending on, on the type of people that we're dealing with, depending on, uh, you know, uh, how much, you know, the diversity of the community, uh, the concern about uh, these things not really being important in certain communities. So uh, the, uh, you just look at the environment and you kind of assess the needs of, of the environment and, and you then uh, decide to uh, create some sort of a program. Uh, you are doing it online. Others are doing it at the local level, at, this, at the school level. Uh, but it uh, doesn't matter what form it takes. It's important that that this is something that, again, is part and parcel of every community's work. And I think one particular area that I find uh, to, to to be of concern, and I think that's that's very important, is that uh, um, people of faith uh, belonging to different. Uh, religious traditions, it's important for them uh, to fight against those, and I don't mean fight uh, physically or fight in a nasty manner, of course, with wisdom and with kindness, to push back against uh, those within their own uh, faith uh, traditions and religious traditions that believe in the idea of uh, monopoly over the truth that believe in the idea of our faith group is superior to others. The Quran comes out very strongly against that and says that people claim to be better than others. Uh, and uh, the Quran clearly says in the Akramakum and that the best of you and uh, God's eye are the ones who are the most conscious of them. And so it's not. Uh, belonging to a certain faith tradition that makes us superior to others. And, and this is something that we need to balance with actually believing in our faith traditions. Because again, we're Muslims because we, uh, as Muslims, alhamdulillah, we know uh, uh, we have convictions uh, of, of the truth of Islam. Uh, and that's why we're Muslims. But that needs to be balanced with doing away with any notions of superiority. Uh, we have found our truth. Uh, this is our truth. And this is something that we believe will, will lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we suspend judgment about others. And you know, the Islamic tradition uh, has some, uh, something to say about this. And there are uh, you know, a few opinions on this matter. But even uh, in the classical um, and classical uh, scholars of Islam, they have clearly uh, said, many of them have voiced their opinions about us um, suspending our judgment about others and what will happen to others and what, uh, what it is actually, uh, what's appropriate is to leave uh, their affair to God Almighty and what happens to people in the hereafter is between them and God Almighty and that our concern should be for their to respect them and honor them and ennoble them as the Quran says that وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have ennobled and honored all children of Adam and so for us to, as people of faith uh, to do away with uh, this notion that we have monopoly over truth. Uh, only God has monopoly over the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows the truth and who to whom belongs all the truth. We are just pursuers and seekers of truth and we should never be, uh, you know, allow ourselves to be arrogant and to, to think that we are superior and we are, we are better than others because we belong to a certain faith group and rather to leave uh, that uh, kind of a majestic uh, status to God Almighty. He alone has the truth and has monopoly over the truth. 
we are seekers of truth and um, and if we are convinced one way or another that doesn't obligate others to follow us mm -hmm. uh, we have to be able to explain our positions with with wisdom and with kindness and doesn't matter what kind of a response we get whether we are our explanation and our message is accepted or rejected the prophet ali salatu wasalam was, has been told uh, and it's the story of the quran repeatedly uh, to all the prophets that god almighty tells them uh, that your job is not to to uh, shove the truth down people's throats essentially it is your duty to uh, convey the message and leave the rest to god so even uh, the prophets who who are the most intimate with god and who re receive direct revelation from god and you know there is no level of conviction conviction and uh, and strength of belief more than a prophet yet even a prophet is told that your job is to deliver the message to convey the message the, the rest of it leave it uh, to me and so uh, that that's very important for us in, in order to to create that environment of uh, of equality that environment that's pluralistic that environment in which everyone is respected uh it's important that we don't claim that we have monopoly over the truth and we do away with this notion of faith uh, supremacy you know we talk about supremacy of different uh, racial groups race races and ethnic groups claiming that they are superior to others but it is also true of faith groups where certain faith groups can claim to be uh, can claim supremacy over others it's important for us to do away with that and that can be easily reconciled and balanced uh, with your firm convictions and your religion for us as muslims alhamdulillah we can be um, we can have our firm convictions in islam and we can be strong muslims but at the same time uh, we don't necessarily have to claim to have a monopoly uh, over the truth and to be uh, to have supremacy over others and rather uh to uh, to consider ourselves seekers of truth and that god almighty alone is the one who has all the truth and that we need to approach all our fellow human beings uh from from that perspective uh, and and deal with them with, with dignity and respect and ultimately uh, allowing them and their affair to be judged by god almighty wow you know a lot of people who are probably hearing you they might be shocked and say this is not the islam we know <laughs> whether it's the extreme muslims or whether it's those out there who are trying to make label islam as extreme and haters and killers um so what you're saying is very beautiful you know, it says the true message of what islam is and me myself studying islam you know <clears throat> i would go and open the Quran or open the hadith and try to find where it says to kill the Christians or kill the Jews or be uh, disrespectful to other faiths or um, harm people. So I would, I would try to research it and try to find anywhere in the Quran or the hadith where it did state it. But nowhere did I find it. The, the more I studied it, the more I found the golden rule. It was like the, the core message of Islam. One of the core messages of Islam is humanity taking care of humanity and loving humanity and caring for it so you know it's, it just you know we just i guess a lot of people we don't bother to take go open a book and read or go research or ask and we're just we hear news and we believe it um we don't question we blindly fi follow what everyone says and that's sad that's something that's happening a lot in our days especially we're in a time of um where knowledge is easily accessible but we don't take the time to learn and explore even you know us learn us muslims learning about other faiths you know we have so much similarities we open the bible sometimes you know i open the bible sometimes i'm thinking i'm reading the quran because of our similarity and that's the sad part today you know when we have access to knowledge but we don't seek it 
And that's where, you know, the ignorance will go away and then we will start having tolerance and respect for each other. So those who are tuning in, we have Imam Zia, who is speaking on the topic of the golden rule in Islam. He's the founder of MakeSpace. So um, continuing with our questions, so we have some, uh, about 10 more minutes, we'll go with my questions, then we'll ask questions from the viewers. I saw two questions already, um, so we'll ask those questions, and if anyone else has questions, they will ask. Um, probably answer this, but if uh, you want to skip, let me know. What are some of the lasting effects on a child who learns the golden rule during childhood, during their childhood? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think we covered that, but yeah. you know, in a nutshell, uh, they, you know, they they become uh, sort of the the bearer of uh, of glad tidings of of, of positivity, and uh, that's reciprocated. So they, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that that spreads, and we see it, you know, uh, in in practice. You know, when I look at uh, my children, uh, when they um, when they're out there and and they're trying to be nice to other children, it's easily reciprocated. And so I'm hoping, inshallah, that continues as they grow up. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I think of, of that being done in a, by, by enough people, uh, that creates so much positivity. And I think it looks like that uh, is probably lacking. And that's why there is you know, the, the amount of hate that we see out there. Mm -hmm. And so more of that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think one of the reasons is because we live in a world of individualism, selfish, where we, um, it's just about us, um, iPhone, iPad, it's fulfilling our own needs, our own desires and wants. Do you think the consumerism, all this has an effect on why we are not respecting other, others, besides just having the ignorance of not knowing other people and not taking the time to understand people of other faith or race? Or nationality absolutely that's absolutely part of the reason mm -hmm. materialism consumerism and this idea of uh, glorifying the self and, and always uh, pursuing uh, validation pursuing being better than others uh, which is an unfortunately aided and abetted in a large part by social media that's part of the problem as part of the problem is uh, that, uh, you know, there is not a lot of focus on we. There's a lot of focus and a lot of tools available to magnify and to glorify the I. Uh, and so, uh, you know, social media and, and other uh, platforms and technologies, there's so much benefit, so much good in them. But there's also, uh, these are tools that are, you know, that have been used to, you know, to uh, to affect these things very adversely and so um, that's uh, really part of it the consumers uh, aspect of our society and the materialism that's spreading that's that's part of the problem and I think people of faith are in in the best position to address that because they their inspiration is uh, from the, their traditions and uh, the religious traditions focus on on humility, focus on serving others, focus on building communities, focus on the we. Uh, and so, um, religion in general has a big, big part to play. Uh, and I think uh, there is nothing more effective and nothing better than different religions. Uh, joining hands together and, uh, and and building a platform that will bring the golden rule uh, to the forefront and that will allow communities to live based on, on the golden rule and, and, you know, spread humility, spread the, the ideas and notions of service uh, and, and being at the service of others and the, the notion that uh, that uh, the master of the people is their servant. And I think that's one area that I see uh, that I don't see much drive in, in many of our youth to serve, uh, especially to serve selflessly and to serve in a capacity where they're not seen. People easily get engaged and involved in 
visible roles, but it's, uh, you know, behind the scenes, uh, difficult, challenging work that's really rewarding, that builds people, that builds communities. I see that there is, uh, there is more work that needs to be done uh, in Muslim communities, for sure. Sure. to encourage uh, young people to be more involved in service and, and giving back selflessly without the need to be seen and to be recognized all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, from my perspective, perspective, that's kind of due to us pushing leadership skills a lot. I see it everywhere that we're always like, be leaders, be leaders. Even me working with those people I work, I, I see uh, we have a leader, but not a lot of great followers. Yes, we do not follow blindly, but um, when the, we have a leader, we have to respect them and follow and comply to their orders. Um, and I, I don't see uh, much of that. And, I mean, we do work on collaboration, but we don't really work on how we should be good followers, whether we're at work or as a student or as a parent. A child even you know teaching our children to be grateful to their parents um, so uh, I, I see a lack in that um, yeah in, in fact you know our uh, tradition kind of uh, changes that paradigm it actually teaches you that uh, you know if you want leadership you have to serve it's, mm -hmm. it's the servant that's the actual leader it's mm -hmm. not the the person that's nominated or elected as a leader, that's the, the true leader. The true leader is the one that serves. You mm -hmm. know, that's, uh, that's that, you know, that, you know, fulfills the needs of people. Uh, and so, you know, that's the example of the Prophet ﷺ too, that when he said, for me to walk with a brother of mine, to fulfill what, one of their needs is more beloved to me than being in seclusion in the masjid for one month. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so the prophet was uh, a servant of his community, mm -hmm. and he, and he told us that for him to serve his community is more beloved to him than uh, seclusion, where he is in seclusion with Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, in the masjid, worshiping uh, and experiencing uh, the, the heights of spirituality and connection to God. He prefers uh, serving someone and fulfilling someone's needs. Uh, over that and that tells you something about what the prophet taught us uh, about leadership so mm -hmm. so there's nothing wrong with wanting to be leaders but i think what's important is that we uh, switch the definition or the, the paradigm of, of leadership where um, leadership is not about comfort or recognition or limelight but rather it is about being at the service of others uh, and and not seeking uh, validation, not seeking recognition, not seeking visibility, but rather trying to hide from that and staying away from that. Uh, and so if we understand leadership properly, that's, there's nothing wrong with seeking it in that manner, because then the more leaders you have, the more servants of, of humanity you have. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, we will try to finish off the questions because time is getting uh, short on us. Is there, any, if you, you want to skip this question, we could skip it and go to the next question. Do you have any story that you could share with us, whether it's in your life experience or someone you knew or through history that had applied the golden rule? Um, you, they have seen the benefits, the fruits of it in their life. Um, well, there are, uh, so many, so many stories, and, and, and I think uh, um, well, one story that do uh, does come to mind is I remember there was a uh, there was an interfaith event that I participated in uh, just a month or two before uh, the 2016 presidential elections. So I was on a panel with a uh, with a Catholic. A priest and a Jewish rabbi, and I was representing the Muslim community, and so uh, we were addressing sort of the things that uh, are of concern to our three faith traditions in our communities, uh, in particular the the notions of 
uh, social justice and acceptance and the golden rule sort of was one thing that did come up a lot in, in those discussions. Uh, and uh, what was interesting was that there was a small group of people that was in attendance that was uh, just there to, to smear Islam and they were just there to, to target Islam and, you know, I was the representative so you know, I, they constantly targeted me uh, and they they would, uh, you know, when I would quote something about peace and about humanity and about justice and things of that nature, they would shout out uh, a, a twisted understanding of a verse or something like that from uh, from the crowd. And so they were very disruptive throughout, but uh, despite all of that, the event went very well. Uh, but at the end, and some of these guys came up to the stage uh, and they and they started, uh, you know, basically uh, saying some very mean things to me uh, about how we are here to take over this country and that we are the fifth column and that we are not to be trusted and that this is Tiqiyya, et cetera, et cetera. So they just had all this misinformation uh, that they were you know, judging Islam and judging me based on, on, on that. And so uh, before I could respond to them, I saw that these two beautiful uh, people of God that were there on the stage with me, the, the Jewish religious leader and the Catholic religious leader, they stood up uh, uh, for me and they they defended me against people that were, some of those people were Jewish and some of them were Christians. Yet they stood up uh, in, in, in my defense, supporting me and protecting me against uh, their abuse, even though they belong to their own faith tradition. And so that I saw was just a beautiful, beautiful example uh, of the golden rule of the importance of understanding uh, mm -hmm. that we don't have monopoly over the truth and that we are all the same at the end of the day, that we all come from the same roots uh, and we all share so much in, in common. Uh, and so uh, I saw that it wasn't just, you know, it was supposed to be just talks and discussions, but I saw it took a turn for someone to take a stand. And these people, they could have ignored it. They could have said, you're on your own, you can answer, you know, their questions and whatnot, yet they stood up and they did not allow them to abuse me. Uh, and they responded to their accusations. They responded on, on my behalf to their accusations that, uh, that Muslims are terrible or that they are here to take over this country, etc. And I thought that was just such a beautiful experience for me. Uh, I saw a, an implementation uh, or this golden rule being brought to life right there in that in that beautiful Catholic church. Mm. What a beautiful story. It had an ugly beginning, but a beautiful ending. And um, I see a lot of non-Muslims who are always there standing up for us. So, you know, I don't believe in painting everyone with the same brush. Um, there are diverse people who, who cares and respect people of other faiths especially when the Muslim ban was happening, you know, you see all these protests, majority of them were non-Muslims. Uh, when 9-11 happened, you know, a lot of people, not just me, other friends and family told me that their non-Muslim friends were always contacting them to make sure they're okay. So there's a lot of beautiful people out there. You know, we just, uh, what I feel for those people who don't take time to learn, I feel uh, sorry for them because um, they're being brainwashed by hate and they just need to take the time to get to know a Muslim and try to have an open discussion and trying to take the time to understand. You know, and I know a lot of Muslims, we open our doors to them, we open our homes to them, we open the masjid, we have open house where we welcome these people to come and talk with us and have a discussion and let's let's see where, where you think we are wrong and where we could talk about what we could improve in our culture and our society. So I just hope people open up their hearts and minds to collaborate and work together instead of having hate for each other. So now... Yeah, I I'd like to add just a, a yeah. small little point, uh, if I may, that you know while you know it's important that 
you know, we as as, as Muslims uh, look at the positive and look at all the good people out there that are doing good work. It's also important for us to uh, do some uh, self reflection and self accountability. Yeah. And um, in terms of our own community, uh, uh, number one, uh, there's also uh, a lot of that uh, supremacist uh, worldview that we have amongst us, that Muslims thinking that they are the true inheritors of, of this world and they should rule the world. There's a lot of that amongst us, that faith supremacy that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's dangerous. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's very dangerous. We have that, and that that's not something that Islam teaches. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second thing that that's important is while we uh, pursue justice and we expect to uh, be treated with dignity and with, with with tolerance and with with beauty by others, it's important that uh, when we expect kind of uh, an interfaith level, uh, at the interfaith level, we want acceptance and we want you know, treat, you know, being treated with, with, with dignity and with equality. It's important for us also to apply that intra-faith. Within our own faith, uh, there are different uh, groups, uh, whether it's you know, ethnic groups or uh, in terms of uh, different sects and schools of thought. Uh, we have a lot of disagreements, obviously. She has so many disagreements within the Sunni tradition. There are a lot of disagreements. It's important that we give each other that dignity and that respect that we call others out on. You know, when we call out others for, for hate and for prejudice and for racism and things of that nature, yet we in our own communities, uh, if we mistreat our women, if we treat them as second-class citizens, if we, as Sunnis, uh, consider Shias to be inferior and, you know, uh, at times not even Muslim, there are Muslims that do that, uh, and, and other groups within uh, our community, uh, it's, uh, we lose that, that moral high ground. We simply do not have the, the moral uh, standing then to call out people when they call Muslims names, because we're doing it to our own people within our own communities. Mm -hmm. And so that's important, that, uh, that we uh, clean up our own house as well, and that mm -hmm. we work on, on, on being those role models and those examples that we want to see in, in the larger society. We want accepting mm -hmm. of everyone, we want to be treated you know, with dignity and with respect, uh, we have to be able to give that to people within our own communities mm -hmm. in order for us to be taken seriously. Yes, I can agree more. Uh, what you said is so true. You know, the ignorance comes from our, us too. A lot of us, we don't take the time to study our own faith and see what really God is telling us or what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us. Um, even me, myself, you know, I grew up with uh, culture, Islam, and uh, you know, Till time I, you know, I didn't, I didn't study until my early twenties when I start opening the books and reading Quran and listening to lectures and discussing different points of my, my faith. Before that, it was just culture, uh, you know, following the Hanafi method and um, we thinking we were superior or whatever. So you know, I tried to get myself out of that ignorance and I tried to see for myself what Islam is and like you said, working on my own self first. So. You know, if a lot of our Muslims try to open up the books, open the Quran, and open with an open heart and learn Islam and study Islam, they'll see the beauty. And the racism, you know, that's one of the reasons why I want to promote goodness and understanding, because a lot of our people does have racism and prejudice. And, and I hear it all the time, and it, it makes me sick. I say, why, when our faith was, uh, you know, brought by promoting justice and love and understanding why are we having so much hate towards others or we're like race we have a racist um, mindset against other people so um it's it's a this is a you know beautiful topic and you know we could go on and on but we need to continue so we could wrap up in uh, in about 10 15 minutes so imam zia you you are the founder of makespace how does makespace fall into this the teachings of the golden rule 
I know through the history of uh, Make Space, um, there was, you know, you were motivated to create this space for people to come and learn about Islam and practice it without judgment. So now, how the golden rule is implemented in there and more promoted? Um, well, I think the golden rule is one of our sort of uh, founding uh, principles uh, because um, uh, we focus on, on this environment that's non-judgmental, that's open, that's welcoming, where, uh, you know, everyone is treated equally and, and everyone is expected and encouraged to uh, respect others and, and treat others with, with, with dignity uh, and accept them for who they are at their particular level of faith because we believe that each one of us, we have our own personal copy of, of our religion that we are practicing. Where, we, you know, Islam is one, of course, but our experience with it is unique. My experience is unique with Islam than the experience that you have or Ahmad has or Fatima has. So we all come with our own personal copies of the religion. Uh, and it's important to respect that we are all at, you know, on on different chapters. Some some of us are at the beginning. Some some of us are in the middle of this. Uh, we have forgotten. We are starting over, and so it's uh, uh, the the importance of that sort of understanding uh, of not expecting uniformity because that's just not human. The Prophet والسلام, did not establish a uniform community. He did not expect uniformity. He answered the same question that was asked based on the level of the person he was dealing with. He would respond to it very differently, even though the question was the same thing. And so uh, to, uh, to understand that uh, is just so important in order for, for the golden rule uh, to be, to be the, that, that, foundational element of, of any community mm -hmm. so um what last last words you have for the people who are watching whether they're the youth or the adults um what last message do you want to give them before we wrap up well we have the the month of ramadan is, is upon us uh, and it's a great uh, uh, and a blessed opportunity for us to reconnect uh, with the Quran, reconnect with the divine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the theme of Ramadan actually at makes this this year is to reconnect with the divine. And so the implication is that we all mm -hmm. fall short and we all forget and we all slip uh, and God Almighty gives us an, an opportunity every time to reconnect with him. And the month of Ramadan symbolizes that opportunity, even though it's not limited to the month of Ramadan, but mm -hmm. it is one big giant symbol of that you know, opportunity that God gives you to, to come back. Because if, uh, you know, if this was about, uh, you have one chance, there will be only one Ramadan in a lifetime. But he gives us this every year uh, to make us realize that you can always come back and reconnect. So it's an opportunity to to reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. uh, and to reconnect with our community as well because Ramadan is uh, committing, uh, communicating and connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by connecting with others. That's why we have, um, uh, you know, this whole Ramadan experience of iftar, of tarawih, all of it. It, it brings people together and it brings fellowship and worship together. And one complements the other. You don't have fellowship without worship. You don't have worship without fellowship. And so uh, to approach this Ramadan, uh, perhaps uh, slightly differently, and to approach it in a way where, um, you know, we uh, kind of need to look back in, in the year that has gone by us to to reflect on all the lessons that we can learn and to see how the month of Ramadan can help us uh, uh, heal those wounds that we may have caused or may have been exposed to yeah. uh, and how we can truly 
make Ramadan an expression and a platform for the golden rule. Uh, because many times people uh, view Ramadan through very, uh, very narrow lens of just, uh, you know, worship in a very limited, narrow uh, interpretation of, of worship. We need to kind of expand that. The Prophet ﷺ was, was the most generous in the month of Ramadan. He has to do everything with the golden rule and with the rights of our fellow human beings. And so, uh, to while we worship Allah, read the Quran, we read Taraweeh, we, we make dhikr, we also need to realize that the month of Ramadan is not about abandoning others. It's actually doubling down on, on doing things for our fellow human beings. Uh, you know, Sadaqa, Sadaqat al-Fitr, Zakat al-Fitr uh, is just an example of that symbolizing the importance of caring for others. Uh, the lesson of the month of Ramadan. A month of, uh, of it's about empathy, uh, to build that empathy for others. So interconnected with uh, the values taught by Golden Rule. So hopefully we can benefit from the month of Ramadan uh, in that manner. Yeah. Okay. So uh, before we leave, what other plans do you have for Make Space or for yourself? And where can the audience reach you? Or if they want to come and visit Make Space, where can they connect? Well, Make Space is, um, uh, for a long time, we didn't have our own space. We were pretty virtual and going from place to place, which was itself a beautiful experience because we we're not a masjid. And so uh, an important part of our identity is that we are available online, uh, but we also have our uh, headquarters now in Alexandria, Virginia, which is a space that's sufficient for uh, mid-sized classes and meetings, etc. But we also are praying uh, Taraweeh this year at a fire station across the street from our office. And that's just an example of how we work uh, diligently with our neighbors uh, from from the community uh, to build those bridges and as a result of those bridges we are now able to uh, to use this facility for the month of Ramadan. So we'll be praying in a couple of different uh, fire stations uh, in uh, the Alexandria Springfield area and more information can be obtained by visiting our uh, website imakespace.com as well as our Facebook page facebook.com slash imakespace. Hope mm -hmm. to see you guys inshallah here if you, if you live in this community if you're visiting. Hope to see you uh, one of those nights during the mm -hmm. you, also, you also said that you have some Quran reflection program going on during Ramadan. It'll be part of Taraweeh so our, we want to make our Taraweeh uh, you know a more uh, enlightening experience so it's not just about Taraweeh there's always a, uh, a talk uh, about uh, the verses that are recited uh, we also an important feature of our Taraweeh is we have uh, sister speakers that come uh, up and, and, and share their reflections and their knowledge and that's an important area we empower our sisters uh, and there's a lot more that we do uh, we'll have iftars for like uh, mothers and daughters, and son and, and sons and fathers. We have an interfaith of thought. Uh, we have a diversity night. So we have a lot uh, in store for our community. Wow, amazing, wonderful things happening on in Make Space. So I will I will put the information down below in the comment bar after our talk, and you could just go there and visit the web, their website or their Facebook page to get more information on what's going on. As, yeah, I hear uh, your voices, uh, you sound a little sick. I was going to ask you if you could recite Surah Al-Fatiha for us, because you are half his of the Quran. And um, I don't, do you feel up to it? Sure, sure. Yeah, this one, if that, this one lets me. This is Summer, guys. Assalamu alaikum, Summer. How are you? Okay. Good. We're going to listen, we're going to recite Surah Al-Fatiha, okay? Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر very beautiful uh, beautiful voice has blessed you with uh, alhamdulillah yeah it's um, magnificent um, there's a few questions uh, if you don't mind answering then if you need to leave you could leave and I'll just wrap up um, so a lot of people said hi and assalamu alaikum we say hi back thank you for tuning in um, a lot of prayers are in our chat box um, so oh, I saw Lydia, she had a question. How can adults turn grief and sadness into the golden rule rather than it becoming anger? That's, that's a heavy one because we, um, yeah, my father is, is going through a, a difficult time. with uh, he's, uh, He has stage four cancer, so please remember him in, in your du'as. Uh, and it could be challenging. Uh, it's uh, it's not an easy question to answer. Uh, it could so easily uh, grief and and these types of challenges and illnesses can turn into uh, resentment, resentment towards God, resentment towards others who you feel are not doing enough for you. Uh, it's it's important to keep the bigger picture in mind and to keep uh, our reality in mind that ultimately we are travelers uh, in this earth, that we are not here to live here forever, and that we eventually must move on uh, to the next life, the next stage, and that it's important for us to, uh, to understand the, uh, the test and trial element of this life, that an important part of our lives is that it's a test, and there are different levels of, of tests that we will be exposed to uh, and no one is immune from from these tests and so uh, to understand uh, the reality of these tests and to know uh, that they are they are meant to make us better and they are meant to they are all uh, hidden messages of love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, from God Almighty and they're meant to build our character and to make us better human beings. Uh, and so when we f feel those pressures, uh, as, as soon as we realize we don't, that we shouldn't give in and that we shouldn't allow grief and sadness to turn into resentment and anger, that's when we have taken the first step in actualizing these tests, uh, making us uh, better human beings. Mm -hmm. Um, I pray for your father that he gets better and um, may Allah bless you with the strength and uh, may Allah bless you with ease during this difficult time. We're very, very sad uh, to hear about his health condition and those out there, please make dua for Imam Zia's father um, so he could recover and get healthy back on his feet. Uh, continuing on, Sister Lydia has another question question what kind of activities is, in particular can a child do to promote the golden rule with other children um, what kind of activities can can children do I, I mean you're an expert in, in that area so I would I'd defer to you from, from my experience um, yeah, anytime you give them that uh, uh, you know that positive, healthy environment where you lead by example and you teach them kindness and goodness, uh, they, they easily translate that and, and, and you know, sort of uh, copy uh, those traits when they're dealing with other children. So uh, if, if you don't 
teach them by example and if it's just words and your actions contradict to words it's your actions that would be uh that they you know that would be reflected in their character mm-hmm. yeah, so it's important for us as parents and as adults to set those examples and to uh, to to lead by example Yeah, beautiful said. Yeah, we have set the example. By the way, Lydia is my friend and she just converted to Islam about a month ago. She will be visiting me next week all the way from Georgia. And she's also in need of dua, so if we could pray for her health that Allah bless her with health. And Amen. you know, she's a beautiful soul. She's just coming to visit me. You know, we don't even know each other for that long and she wants to come and visit me. And I think she she is a great representative of the golden rule. She just wants to visit me to spend time with me to learn her faith. And you know, talk to her this past past month since she converted. You know, like she has she has the beautiful quality, a beautiful soul, so kind and understanding and you know, may God bless her with health and make her hardship come into ease. She has one more last question and then <laughs> Imazia I know <laughs> we took long I uh, will wrap it up for you. She asked it's really hard to have children back away from technology and I wonder if uh, he has any suggestions on how to do that with love so if, if if the child doesn't feel they are being punished. We're struggling with that ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have an answer. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's tough you know it's it's always important to continue to love them and to continue to be loving and kind uh but with, with children you know we have uh somewhat of a leverage so uh sometimes it's it's not that difficult to take those tools away from them but i think uh one thing that i well, me and fatima see is that when we have an alternative for them it's much easier to yank yeah. that on away mm-hmm. from them or to turn the TV off. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have any alternatives, uh I I don't think it's uh, it's uh, it's helpful to turn off the TV and just tell them to be quiet and, and just go sit there and do nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh if we have healthier um, better alternatives, it's mm-hmm. always doable. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's still a challenge. It's yeah, it's not it easy. is. Yeah, it is especially us I mean even though we're on the social media or we on laptops or phones we're doing something good promoting something good but our children are looking at us and we're always on it they you know they they say why are you always on it and you're asking me not to be on it so it's hard to explain to a child's mind that you know we're doing something to benefit you know the community um yes it is and you know, especially where, where parents are very busy and um so the best thing to do is setting a time limit and making sure they watch something beneficial and uh, having quality time things they could do like toys building blocks or chalk using chalk reading books um, doing some arts and craft something they could do appropriate to their age to get them busy and let them use their imagination and cre- creativeness that's what i try to do with my daughter you know i say no tv no uh, internet during school nights and weekends that's when i give her a little um of it So um Imam Zia thank you very much for to, you know talking to us you explained the golden rule in Islam very beautiful you've answered all our questions and um I pray for your father and I pray for you that Allah gives you the strength to deal with this hardship you're facing um if you have any last remarks you could um say them now and then if you have to leave you could leave and I could wrap it up or if you want to stay is up to you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all your mm-hmm. your viewers and thank you for this opportunity uh, allowing me to share uh, some of my limited deficient uh, knowledge and some of my experiences. I really appreciate it and I ask a lot to bless your efforts and to continue to uh, give you the strength and uh the tawfiq to to do this for his sake and to uh to to make this a source of khair and goodness uh for for everyone uh, being touched by it inshallah mm-hmm. so that's our clock thank you wa alaikum wa alaikum assalam 
So, assalamu alaikum viewers. Hello viewers. Um, the month of Ramadan will be starting next week, which will be a great time to put the golden rule into practice. A time for sharing, a time for caring, a time to invite those who are not Muslims and teach them what your beautiful faith has. A time to show the world that, you know, Islam is about compassion and understanding and working for humanity. That's, that's one of the main motives of Islam. So I really thank everyone who's been tuning into all my shows. Uh, this was the 10th show I've done so far on, in my pilot pro program. I started in the beginning of March and I had 10 great speakers who came and spoke about different ways for us to help improve the society, both at the individual level and as a, as a community. So I really appreciate them coming on and I appreciate all my audience. So this was a pilot program I conducted. I'm thinking about, um, well, I'll be stop, stopping for the month of Ramadan. I'm thinking about restarting in late summer or early fall. Um, I will I will share the information once it's uh, more planned out and let you guys know. And uh, of course, you could always watch it, go come back and watch my shows. I do edit all my videos. So, so far I've edited four of them and I put it on my YouTube channel, which is Gulmiki Saleh. You could subscribe to that channel and watch all the edit verse, versions of these um, Facebook lives I've been doing. And I'll also upload them on my Facebook pages. Um, so everyone, thank you for watching. May God bless you. And uh, may you all have a blessed Ramadan, those who are the Muslim faith. And those who are not, have a good summer. Enjoy yourself and take care of yourself. So thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Bye.